Today I want to discuss the TCP slow start feature. And yes, it's a feature. It's not really, a, I mean, it is sometimes a problem, but it is not a bug or a problem that has been accidentally introduced. It was introduced on purpose. So if you're interested, stay tuned. What is going on, guys? My name is Hussein, and I discuss backend engineering in this channel, sometimes networking aspects of uh, that that kind of touches on the backend engineering and, and performance like slow start. So if you're interested, check out the channel, subscribe, like this video, and let's just jump into it. And uh, yeah, slow start. So TCP slow start have been introduced into the TCP protocol to solve a problem. And that problem is called congestion control, right? So we want to control uh, how much packets and data we sent from the client, which could be a browser, could be curl, could be a C sharp app, could be a Python app, or a server that is a web server, which is Apache, Node.js, Express, anything, right? And the more data you send, and the server might actually be able to receive this data. However, the intermediate network in the middle cannot handle this much data for one reason or another. Thus, the protocol, which is TCP, have this ability to control the congestion, right? So, and slow start starts with a smaller window of uh, the maximum segment packet that you can send, the size, right? And start with a small size and it sends. And if, if we acknowledge it immediately, we start increasing and start sending that. And then we start increasing that window, that the packet we can send. And so we do that until we reach the maximum size the server can handle. And during this uh, process, if anything, while we are increasing the window size, the packet size, right? What will happen is if any of those packets didn't uh, acknowledged uh, correctly or we got double acknowledgement or got something like that we will the, the TCP protocol will back will back up and then says okay oh this looks like we increased too much and in this case we're gonna stop that so slow start is this ability to like we're gonna start from small window size and so we'll slowly increase the window size right so what's the problem with this so what's the good thing about it good thing about it is like we kind of play with the network, say, okay, let's test the network, let's taste the network more like it. We'll taste this, okay, can you handle this? Can you handle this? Can you handle it? Oh, looks like you handle, let's increase and increase. And until you kind of reach a state where you're happy with the, with the performance and, and, and there are no lost packet or lo there are no errors, right? But during this idea, it's like, this is not always the case, right? Maybe during the transmission, the errors might, might introduce as a result, the server get overwhelmed or the, the server is no longer acknowledging. So this, the client will start uh, reducing that conjunction window uh, uh, size until it reaches uh, a comfortable window, right? So yeah, congestion control is a very interesting feature in the TCP stack, right? It's a feature. However, that slow start could cause some problems. And here's what. Because when I first initiate the TCP connection, three-way handshake, and then if you have a huge payload to send immediately after uh, initiating the request, your will feel the performance because of the slow start. Let's say you're uploading a file and uh, that file is a one gig. And despite your server and you, both party actually accept large size, band, you have good bandwidth, you have great big window sizes, so you both are capable. However, because of the slow start problem, you just established the TCP connection and you're about to send that huge file, which will be broken into smaller and smaller packets. Those packets will be very fine and very small in the beginning. 
because of the slow start, right? Because they was just like, okay, this is just few bytes and there's few and then few. And then as we go in the connection, we'll say, it's like warming up your car in the morning. I don't, that was back in the 90s. I don't think people warm their car anymore. <laughs> or if you have Tesla, you don't do that, right? But yeah, it's just like you were you warming the engine, you have something very similar. And that's the problem with the TCP slow start. If you both of parties actually know that you're good and you can handle that, I'm afraid that I don't think there is a way to around the slow start, TCP slow start problem, especially when you're sending huge amount of data. If you're sending small packets, that I don't think slow start will affect you much because if you're sending a get request, well, if you're sending a get request and those get requests are so small, so tiny, then the request will make it anyway in the destination server, right? Because you're not gonna break up this get request into smaller, smaller, unless you're sending, I don't know, a huge URL, right? Or, or sending a post request with, with a huge body, right? Then you might start feeling it. Again, this is only the beginning of the TCP startup, right? That's why people uh, recommend warming up or pre-warm the TCP connections, like especially at the proxies. If you have a proxy and those proxy have like an upstream servers, you need to kind of start the TCP connection and start sending garbage data just to warm up the the client and the server. So prox some proxies do that actually. So they they uh, they pre-warm these TCP connections so that whenever an, a fresh request comes in, we have those beautiful TCP connections running and we can just start sending the data so that we don't have this slow start problem with the TCP, right? Obviously, that so so the TCP handshake itself takes a little bit of time and I'm gonna talk about uh, the fast open uh, feature in TCP in another video and how you can speed up that just just the handshake has nothing to do with the slow start, right? That's the fast open. Fat opening the handshake and then the slow start will kick in obviously. So that's why not only opening and closing connection is expensive as a backend engineer, if you're building, if you if you have proxies and you be aware of these timeouts, play with those timeouts as much as possible. If you're building an application, uh, even talking to you, front end engineers, right? If you're opening an HTTP connection, I mean, if you're in the browser, you don't have to worry about any of that, what I'm saying, right? The browser take care of opening and closing HTTP connection for us, which is awesome, right? However, if you're building your own Python application or your own, what is it called? Electron application. I think Electron still uses a browser, so it doesn't count. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you're building your own C-sharp application, your Python application, you have to establish an HTTP connection. And when you establish that TCP connection, uh, or the HTTP connection, which has a TCP connection, obviously, if it's HTTP 2 and below, right? That has a cost in it, right? Make sure you warm this connection. So if you have like an, a splash screen opening your application, start those TCP connection as much as possible, leave them open, even if you're not using them yet, right? Open them, warm them up, right? And so that's where I recommend eager loading versus lazy loading of the TCP connection. Lazy loading the TCP connection is not a good idea because of those problems that we just extend. Because TCP, first, there is the three-way handshake, which can be avoided by the fast open. But again, the server has to support it. And then the slow start. Again, slow start only is a problem when you're sending a huge amount of data in the beginning of the request of, of the establishment of TCP connection, right? So yeah, I'm gonna make another video very uh, short. I don't wanna make it longer than that. That's the idea of a slow start. Uh, it is a feature in the TCP. However, just pay attention to it. Know that it exists. Be aware of it as a backend engineer and also a front end engineer. Be aware of these things, right? You don't have to do anything with it, but just having the fundamental knowledge of these low level concepts gives you an edge as an engineer 
in order to tweak things. You can play with things like same thing with a state uh, serverless, right? The serverless has this huge problem today, which is a cold start, and, and TCP is one of it. Some so Amazon and, and Azure and Microsoft and Google, they're trying to solve this with a lot of neat engineering, very cool engineering tricks to solve these problems. So just keep this in mind. Slow start is a feature in the TCP stack. You don't, you cannot do much about it. We need it so we don't flood the network, the internet without it. The internet will just shut down, right? So we need this conjunction control. Otherwise we're gonna lose uh, uh, packets. Otherwise you, you will have performance issues. So we need to control this, right? So, so in the application, just be aware of the slow start uh, feature property of the TCP. And then just uh, think about it while you're designing, while you're architecting your application, while you're building your front-end applications for that, for that reason. Obviously, you have to m kind of measure that with the memory footprint. Having too many open TCP connection could be a bad idea. Then having HTTP2, which kind of multiplexes those requests into one TCP connection is always a good idea. All right, guys. You guys see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. What should I discuss next? Right below in the comment section below. See you. Bye. Stay awesome.